You click a button and nothing happens. You don't know JavaScript because your website has no functionality. Or does it? You can make functional buttons with HTML and CSS, and I will be showing you with the example of a load more button. In our HTML, we want to start by creating a container, and then create an input and give it the type of checkbox, because that will be our substitute for our button. We can give that an ID of BTN box, and then move on. Still inside the container, we can create an ordered list, a list item, and give that a style of background image. And then inside of the list items, we can store our images. So we set it to URL, then inside the brackets, we can put our first image link. Go to our output, and we see our first image and our checkbox. Then we can go ahead and copy and paste our list item a couple more times so that we have enough tags to store all of our images. Once we have it copied, we have to change all the URLs to separate URLs so we can have different images. So in our second one, we can go ahead and replace our old one with a new one. And if we go to our output, we can see our new image. Same for the third one. If we replace it, we go to our output, we see a new image, although it may not seem very visible right now. Same for the fourth image. And then we can do the same for the fifth image delete our link, and then just copy and paste our new link in. And then lastly, our sixth image, we can place a new URL, and we have all our images. Underneath that, we need to create a label, and it's for but BTN box, which we created earlier, and give it a class of BTN area. Inside of the label, we want to create two spans. So the, the spans will be used for the text in our buttons. So the first span will have a class of BTN1. And our second span, we can give it a class of BTN2. Inside the spans for BTN1, we can set the text to load more in all caps. And then for BTN2, we can type load less also in all caps. If we then go up in our head tag, we can add a link tag for our CSS, and when we go to our output, we can see our spans, our checkbox, and all our images. In our CSS, we can start by creating a body tag and set the background to hashtag F2E7E5. Underneath that, we can set the font family to sans serif. The next thing we can customize is our container. So underneath our body, if we do dot container, we can start by setting the width to 900 pixels, the min height to auto, and the margin to 20 pixels and auto. The next thing we can customize is our unordered list inside of our container. So we can do dot container ul. Inside of that, we can remove the list styling by setting the list style to none and remove the padding by setting the padding to zero. Then we can use the after pseudo element. So if we do dot container ul and then after pseudo element, we have to start by setting the content to blank by just leaving it empty and then setting the display to table and the clear to both. That's all for the uh, container UL after pseudo element. So then we can do the list item. So dot container UL a lot. Inside of that, we can set the width to 30%. And then underneath that, the margin to 30 pixels, 10 pixels, and 0. And then followed by a height of 150 pixels. For the background, we can set the background size to cover and the background position to center. And then float the items to left to better position them. And then float it to left. If we go to our output, the images are placed nicely, but if we'd like to add a little bit extra we can add a box shadow and 
for that we can set it to 0, 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 1 pixel, and then RGBA, we can set the red to 0, the green to 0, the blue also to 0, and then set 0 0.5. If we go back to our output, we can now see a small shadow on our images. Underneath that, we're going to use the NCH child element to only hide our bottom three elements. So if we do 1N plus 4 here, whatever code we put inside, so inside here we can set a max height to 0, an opacity of 0, and that will hide our bottom three items. And we can add a transition of 0 0.2 seconds, ease in. If we go right to our output again, we can see our bottom three images have been hidden. The next thing we can customize is our button area. So to do that, we can do dot container dot btn dash area. Inside of that, we want to start by setting the display to block and then set a background. So for this one, we'll set the background to hashtag 7F, hashtag 7F2A4B. So that will give us a kind of maroonish color. And then we can just set the text color by setting the color to hashtag FFF. And we can set the cursor to pointer, the text align to center the font weight to 900 to bold in our text a little bit, and then a width of 180 pixels, a line height of 50 pixels, and then we can set some margin. So after we set the width of 180 pixels, we can go underneath that, set the line height, and then we can set the margin to 50 pixels, auto, and zero. To round the button, we can just set the border radius to 50 pixels. Now to actually hide our checkbox, we can do dot container dot btn area and then dot btn2. All we have to do to hide that is set the display to none. Then we can hide our hashtag, our ID of hashtag BTN box, so dot container space hashtag BTN box. And then inside that, again, we just want to hide it, so set the display to none. Then we want to check to see if once we click the load more button, but it's actually a checkbox, so we do dot container, and then our hashtag BTN box. And then checked, and then if we check ULLI, and then again do our NTH child 1N plus 4. We set the max height to 1000 pixels after we create our curly bracket and 1N plus 4. And then we want to bring it back. So pre in earlier up in the code, we set the opacity to 0. So we will also have to set the opacity to 1 again, and then do the transition of 0 0.2 seconds, and then set that to ease in. So right now, our load more button comes even once we, we've loaded in the new images. So we want that to change to load less once we click the button. To do that, we can do dot container, and then again, hashtag BTN box. Again, checked. This time we do dot BTN area instead of ULLI. So dot BTN area. And then set it to BTN2. So button 2 is our load less text. So we'll set the display of block to make that come. Then when we click, both text will come because we haven't hit, hidden our first button. So then we do again dot container and then hashtag btn box. Again, repeat that checked. And then we do dot btn area again, but instead of doing dot btn two, we do dot btn one because 
we want to remove our load more text and just have our load less text. So to remove it, we set the display to none. We go to our output, click the load more button, change it to load less, and we have a fully functional button without JavaScript.